First party is the University of Hawaii at Hilo. Thank you. We are here today on behalf of the state of Hawaii's highest institution for education and learning. Is this on? All right. Yeah. John Pete Manat for the University of Hawaii Hilo. We're here today. Right. Okay. Get that. I'll try to get it right. We're, we are here today on behalf of the state of Hawaii's highest institution for education and learning and to seek your approval for a CDUP to allow construction of the 30-meter telescope on Mauna Kea. There should be little doubt about the importance of this project to the scientific community and keeping our state at the forefront of astronomical research and higher education worldwide. The TMT project will advance scientific knowledge, provide jobs, economic benefits, and educational opportunities. And it will do so in a manner that is sensitive to the important cultural concerns that makes our Hawaiian state so unique and treasured. The university has presented significant evidence in the contested case hearing as confirmed in the hearing officer's findings that this project does satisfy the eight criteria to approve the CDUP. The hearings officer's findings clearly detail how each of the eight criteria are satisfied. The main areas of concern can be summarized in three main topic areas, cultural considerations, management of the mountain, and mitigation efforts designed to address any impacts. For cultural considerations, the obvious start point is with the significant evidence introduced to satisfy the eight criteria during the long four-month hearing. From those proceedings, the board now has a large inventory of cultural information for this project that has been collected since at least 2009. This is contained in the cultural impact assessment, the environmental impact statement, consultations during other permit processes, and now through this extensive four-month-long contested case hearing. Cultural concerns have been given a full and complete opportunity to be presented by various interested persons. The information contained in the extensive record for you to consider to satisfy your obligations under Chapter 91-11 is extensive and broad. For Kapa'akai purposes, you'd be hard pressed to find any other project in the state of Hawaii that has gathered st such an extensive inventory or survey of cultural practices and that also analyzes the impacts of the project and addresses mitigation efforts to the extent feasible. On the issue of whether the TMT project would infringe unreasonably on existing traditional cultural practices. For this petition area, there are no traditional or customary practices proven to exist in the five acre footprint and three acre access way. Importantly, the law does not protect religious belief over how the state land should be used, but instead applies to actual practices. For this project, there are no historic properties or religious or cultural activities proven to have taken place over time in this eight-acre TMT project location, and certainly not before persons who have protested this project constructed to Ahu on the access roadway in 2015. No pre-existing traditional practices will be halted by building this project on the eight acre northern plateau location, which is well below the more sensitive summit ridge area. Cultural practices will still be honored and allowed to proceed in the summit ridge areas. After a thorough and complete Kapa'akai analysis, nothing should prevent this board from granting the CDUP 
subject to the proposed conditions that fulfills the board's special obligation to protect Native Hawaiian rights. The second area of emphasis is management by the university. The university is continually striving to improve its management of the mountain. Over the past 20 years, the university has taken many concrete and measurable steps to fulfill its obligation to improve management. Among those steps have included the adoption of the 2000 Master Plan, shifting primary responsibility for mountain management to the University of Hawaii Hilo, and the creation of the Office of Mauna Kea Management. Also working with the Land Board to implement the Comprehensive Management Plan, the Cultural Resources Management Plan, and the Natural, Natural Resources Management Plan, along with the Public Access Plan and ultimately the Decommissioning Plan. The UH is also committed to implement Governor Ige's 10-point plan. UH has engaged with OHA and other groups on management and operational issues. Most recently, in keeping with the 10-point plan, the Board of Regents resolved to support collaborative efforts and return 10,000 acres to the DLNR. The university stewardship will be in part governed by the CDUP and conditions imposed by you as part of this approval process. Those conditions will supplement the already existing management, board approved management plans and will guide the university towards better management of the mountain. The university is continually striving to improve its management and intends to carry through depending on what conditions are imposed in this permit. The third area of emphasis is mitigation. The existing uses in the astronomy precinct are undeniable, undeniably ast astronomical facilities. Those facilities are specifically authorized by law in a conservation district resource subzone. The proposed use here is certainly consistent with existing astronomical uses in the 525 acre astronomy precinct. The TMT location on the flatter slope area of the northern plateau, referred to during this case as Area E, was part of the ongoing concern for cultural issues as far back as the 2000 Master Plan. That plan identified Area E for the future next generation large telescope, and it is beneath the culturally more sensitive summit ridge area. As part of the evolving effort to consider how to address and reduce any additional impacts by the project, significant steps were taken in design to reduce the size, shape, and configuration of the telescope building. The natural resources that will be utilized by the facility include the high elevation, clear sky, favorable humidity, minimal light interference, and mostly stable wind flows. None of those natural resources will be adversely affected by TMT's operations. Of course, uh, an astronomical facility has to include a building in order to enclose a telescope. So the existing of the building itself on land should not adversely and significantly affect the existing natural resources by its mere presence. Objection to an astronomical facility being built is contrary to the intention behind the resource subzone sub allowing for astronomical facilities. The recent Kila Kila decision addressing the facility at Haleakala analyzed that issue in a similar manner and accepted the placement within the previous astronomical use area. To further mitigate and reduce overall impact for the summit area, the university has committed to remove and decommission three telescopes at the higher, more s sensitive summit ridge area. Exhibit A39 is the university's letter committing to decommissioning as part of this TMT project. This will clearly result in a reduction of existing summit area facilities and thereby reduce overall impacts and concerns about incremental growth in the astronomy precinct. The mitigation efforts here are also guided by the governor's 10-point plan 
and address future development, increased educational opportunities, and focus on cultural considerations during the university's management of the leased lands. The UH Board of Regents recently passed a resolution affirming its commitment to collaborative stewardship with those who share the university's belief that Mauna Kea can and should be a global model of synergy, balance, and harmony with indigenous culture, Pono stewardship, education, world-class scientific inquiry, and international collaboration. With award-winning management plans already in place, the university is committed to meaningfully increase education and involvement of Native Hawaiian students and all residents concerning astronomy, celestial navigation, and exploration. Seven years ago, the university filed this application for a CDUP to build the TMT on its leased lands. To say the least, the road has been long for all of those involved. One sentence. But the, the university of resolve has never waved, wavered. We respectfully submit that the university has satisfied its burden of proof and ask that the board issue the CDUP. Thank you. Thank you.